All right, welcome to the Breakwaters podcast. Got a couple of Georges over here. Got George Whitebread and got, of course, your host right here, George. I mean, guy, how, how you doing, George? George, how are you, my friend? Uh, yeah. You know, George is a dying name, but I, I'd like to think that uh, we carry the name on strong with the two of us on the same screen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do you want to tell me about yourself? Um, So, for those... uh. If you recognize me, yes, I'm the redhead who you see at City Field. Uh, George, I know you also work at City Field. I've seen you around before. Uh, yeah. I've been working at City Field for a long time now, you know, seven, seven, eight years, something like that. Uh, done promo there. I've been a tour guide. I interned in broadcasting. Uh, currently, I sell tickets. I still give tours. Um, I've ball boyed there, so I've done a little bit of everything over my time at City Field. It's been a lot of fun. That's nice. That's awesome. So you started off Merchant Marine Academy. You were a sports broadcaster. There. Is like that where you had your passion? Yeah, that's that's uh that's always been you know the number one goal for me. Um, ever since probably I was in second grade when I'd be playing MLB 2K or NHL 2K or Madden or gosh even Mario Super Sluggers, I'd mute the TV. And I'd uh, I'd just do by play play by play for the game, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And you know, a lot of people told me like, "Hey, you sound pretty good." And uh, a lot of my friends were always impressed with uh, my ability to quickly pronounce players' names, no matter what sport it be. So it was always a lot of fun. And here it are it's turned into turned into my job, and really I get to split my hobbies and my job all the same place. So. That's awesome. You gotta have that'll be the show, man. That'll be two K. That's oh, of course. Come on, man. The show is where it's at. Oh, I have, I, have, I have, I play the show. Don't worry. But two uh, <laughs> K is where I started. The first ever uh, baseball game I had by way of video games, I believe, was MLB two K eight with uh, Jose Reyes on the cover. Oh no, it's a throwback. And then I think the yeah, I had the. And then the Nintendo, I had the Longoria one, the one after, I think 2K9. Yep, I have that one too. And then I, I think there's one with Lincecum on the cover as well, right when, right around when he was winning those Cy Youngs. Uh, so. Nice. That's what's up. So you're all over the place with the Mets. So you're broadcast intern, tour guy, promotional staff. I'll tell you about your, your roles and uh, how you enjoy it. Um, you know, Georgia, I get the sense. You know, you're a diehard Mets fan as well, uh, so you can tag along with me on this. That uh, The big thing a lot of people ask me on tours or just in general about working at City, well, what is it like to work at City Field? And I give everybody the same answer. It's one thing to work there, you know, just to work there as a job. It's another thing to work there and be a diehard Mets fan that you get to go to pretty much every single game or you get to work pretty much every single game. And you get to interact with Mets fans, and uh, no matter what it is, whether it's tours, the internship tickets, uh, just being around the game and meeting a lot of really cool people, whether it be fans or other people who work at the ballpark, and I'm sure you can uh, follow up on this. That you know, it feels like one big family there at City Field. Whether you're Fan Fest, whether you're tour guide, whether you're a uh, ticket window person, whether you're a security guard, we all look out for each other. That's one of my favorite parts working there. And uh, you don't have to go very far at City Field to find a smiling face, as I'm sure you know. But uh, it's it's a great place working there, especially as a fan. And uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say that uh, I've stayed for many a games after my work shift ended around the fifth inning. Nice, yeah, that, yeah that's the way. That's the way to go. Uh, I also agree with that. You, I also stay for some games. It's great, great time for sure. So, would well, you have like a fav- favorite role? Do you have like? One's like, oh, this is the this is the great out of all the roles you did. I'm assuming it's probably the broadcast one, right? Oh, absolutely. The broadcasting internship last year, uh, you know, for starters, that was one of the best Mets teams we've seen in our lifetimes. I, th- I still think the 06 Mets are the best Mets team I've ever seen in my life. Right. But um, uh, last year was a lot of fun helping with Old Timers Day, helping with uh, Keith Hernandez's number retirement. Uh, Gil, Hall, Gil Hodges Hall of Fame induction, just uh, getting to work at City Field every day and being a part of everything like that. Uh, you know, probably the coolest thing I did for Old Timers Day was uh, help organize the players in alphabetical order in the dugout. 
Uh, I remember while I was in the dugout organizing the players last year, uh, my phone blew up with about 49 text messages because SNY apparently got a shot of me standing in the dugout with Mike Piazza right behind me. Uh, so my hope one day is to show that to Mike and, you know, get him to sign it or something. But uh, there are pictures of me all over the place with Ron Svoboda in the background, with uh, Daryl Strawberry in the background. It, it was really cool. And, you know, since I tell people that I interned last year and worked with the alumni a lot, and uh, Jay Hart, we'll get to him in a moment. They all ask me, like, oh, how's, you know, this player? How's this player? Well, to keep it short, that first of all, every single Mets current player and alumni I've met have all been fantastic. Uh, they've all been wonderful. Um, in terms of recent players, I'd have to say Curtis Granderson is my favorite. George, I'm not sure how long you've been working at City Field, but in 2017, when he when Curtis got traded to the Dodgers, I was not working at City Field this particular night, but I heard after the game that he got traded the day he got traded, he stood outside the employee entrance in left field and gave all the employees cups of ice cream as they left the building that night when their shift ended. As a thank you for the three and a half years that Curtis was there, uh, so Curtis is definitely number one in my book between current and former players. Uh, Brandon Nimmo is also a, a nice guy, as I'm sure you know, George. We see him over there on the first base line signing autographs and taking photos with everybody uh, every single game. Lindor is also a great guy. We see him doing that a lot. Uh, David Wright's a great guy. I've met him a couple of times. Him and I actually share the same birthday. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but every single Mets player I've met, whether they be current or former, they've all been wonderful. That's awesome. That's great. Curtis Grant, that's a it's a great story. Awesome awesome story. Uh that was uh but we're talking about the Mets, so what we, we like the moves. David Stearns, like do you think they're gonna hire Craig Council as the manager? What's your take on the off season? What do you think's gonna happen? Um well I will say that I, I like how quiet the Mets have been. I feel like a lot of times when you have a team looking for a manager, you hear about, you know, person A, person B, person C, person D, person E, person F, person G, and so on. But the Mets have been very quiet. And, you know, in this case, I don't think it's a bad thing. Let the postseason play out. Uh, congratulations to the Texas Rangers, by the way. I'm sure we'll have a lot to say about them. Um, but I like how quiet the Mets have been, you know, just get the job done. It seems like that's what David Stearns has wanted to do since the day Steve Cohen gave him access to the building. Um, in terms of what I think is going to happen, I mean, all signs are pointing to Craig Council. He has the Milwaukee connection with David Stearns. Uh, it's very similar in football. I mean, you look at the Giants, they have Joe Shane and Brian Dable, the Buffalo connection. So I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if uh, David Stearns brings his guy, Craig Council, from Milwaukee to be the next manager of the Mets. I haven't really heard any other names that are that hot on the iron besides Craig Council. So that's yeah. who I think we'll see is going to be uh, the man to lead the team next year in the dugout. Yeah, I heard, like, Mark Kotze, Andy Green. Like, Andy Green wasn't didn't even lead – wasn't his – Padres team weren't even 500, his teams. And they had, like, Mark Kotze is, like, combined, like, 200 losses. That's crazy. You can't, you can't, you can't hire those guys. got to get my man Craig Council. Well, for what it's worth, I will say about Andy Green, if memory serves me, I do believe he was the manager of the Padres in yeah. 2015, uh, that infamous game the Mets blew the 7-1 to lead where uh, Derek Norris had a five-hit game, had a grand slam in there, and then they had that rain delay with two outs in the ninth, and uh, Justin Upton came up, hit a three-run homer after the rain delay, and then uh, the, game, the next day was the day uh, Wilmer Flores uh, did not get traded, and then he, cr he cried a few days earlier and hit the walk-off home run off the Nationals. So uh, that was one of the most important losses for that Mets team. We know the run they went on to the World Series. But uh, just a little Andy Green fun fact for you there. I believe that. I will confirm that right now. But uh, that's the first thing I always think when I think of uh, Andy Green. Yeah, for sure. So you mentioned, you mentioned the World Series. Let's talk about that. What are your thoughts on the former Mets over there? Scherzer, the uh, the Grom, getting the World Series, the tra 
Jankowski, the GOAT. How can you forget about Jankowski, too? Of How course, you... Travis. Jankowski, not only a uh, former Met, but also the first Stony Brook alumni, or second Stony Brook alumni, to make the World Series. Uh, Joe Nathan was the first, if he, as long as he pitched with the Giants in the World Series in 2002. The last um, person to wear a 16 before they retire it. That's right, Travis Jankowski. Nobody's going to buy my jersey. Remember that slogan from last year? Uh, first of all, congratulations to the Texas Rangers. We'll get into the individual players in a moment. Uh, George, you probably remember it well. It was only 12 years ago. The debacle in game six against the Cardinals with uh, Nelson Cruz misplaying David Fries's fly ball. And, uh, you know, they lost that game after – uh, Lance Berkman got the hit to tie the game in the 10th inning. Then Freeze hit the walk-off home run. Then the Cardinals won game seven the next night. Uh, so, first of all, from a Rangers fan perspective, you never thought you were going to see it after you came that close. Yeah. And in short order, Chris Young and that ownership group over there spent about half a billion dollars on a middle infield with Seager and Semien. And... They got it together in one year. Uh, so congratulations to the Rangers. They made a great run in the playoffs. They were unstoppable on the road. And uh, one of my friends yesterday, who's also a Mets fan and a Giants fan, for our football fans watching, both the 2007 Giants and the 2023 Rangers won 11 straight games on the road. And the 11th and final was a championship-winning game in the state of Arizona. Of course, the Giants won Super Bowl 42 in Arizona. But, uh, again, congratulations to the Rangers. They get their first World Series after 63 years of heartbreak and uh, triumph. So great for them. In terms of the individual Mets, Travis Jankowski had that big hit in game four in the blowout game. I know it was 11 to 7, but it wasn't that close. Scherzer, you know what? He, he fought hard. And I'm not going to sit here and not be happy that Max Scherzer won or not be happy that DeGrom won. You know, DeGrom's choice, it was his choice to go there and – you know what? 11 months after signing the contract, he's going to be parading down the streets of Texas with a ring on his finger and a trophy. Good for Max Scherzer. He said he wanted a second ring. He's going to get a second ring. So I'm happy for everybody involved. Uh, but again, the first thing I'll think of is that 2011 team. You know, this championship is not only for Ranger fans who have waited forever, but this is for. Mitch Moylands, Ian Kinsler, Elvis Andrews, Adrian Beltre, Michael Young, David Murphy, uh, Nelson Cruz, yeah. Mike Napoli, Colby Lewis, Natali Feliz, Scott Feldman, Ron Washington, Josh um, Hamilton. Josh Hamilton. Yeah. You know, you could name the entire roster, but those are the people I thought of first when Josh Spores got the last night, something that team in 2011 could not do. And the Rangers got. And I couldn't be happier for him that they finally don't have to think about the horrors of 2011 anymore, the demons of David Freeze. And very poetic that Nelson Cruz retired the day after the Rangers won the World Series. That's uh, funny, yeah. yeah. Yeah, shout out Nelson Cruz. Great career as well. Yeah, agree with that. All right, so I'm going to go at everyone's favorite round, the quick fire round now. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Favorite TV show? Favorite TV show, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes. Favorite movie? Favorite movie, Office Space. Yes. Favorite favorite athlete of all time? Favorite athlete of all time. This one I haven't been able to figure out. It's a real tight race between David Wright and Eli Manning. I have to choose one. Yeah. I can choose one. They're both, they're, both, they're, 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 it's a dead tie. I do have a story for David right at the end of this, but it is a dead tie between those. I can't choose. So favorite team, is it the Mets or what? Uh, favorite team, if if I choose one team, it's the Mets. The Mets were the first team I really rooted for uh, starting in third grade. Uh, my first Mets game was when I was, what, nine or ten years old. I didn't make it to a Giants or a Rangers game until I was uh, in my double-digit di years. So uh, definitely the Mets are always my first favorite team. I always said... If I had to see one championship the rest of my life, it would be a Mets World Series. So, uh, Granted, I've already seen a giant Super Bowl, but I, I do. Uh, the Mets will always be my number one team. That's awesome. Uh, favorite snack? 
Favorite snack is the one that smiles back. That would be goldfish. Nice. Favorite uh, ice cream, what would you put on it? Favorite ice cream, you said? Yeah, I'm like, what would you put on it? Uh, st strawberry. Anything strawberry is elite. Uh, strawberry ice cream is good. Um, definitely caramel. Uh, while we're talking about ice cream, shout out to the uh, waffle stand at City Field. Best food in the ballpark. Uh, highly recommend the vanilla one with the Oreo bits and the caramel drizzle for our Mets fans listening. Yeah, for sure. I like the Fruity Pebble one. That That's great, too. I've had them all. They're all fantastic. And, uh, let's go with uh, favorite commercial. Favorite commercial? Uh, the one that tells me what time the baseball game is going to be on on Saturday. Or football game or the hockey game or the basketball game. You know those commercials you get where uh, – those commercial where it says, you know, baseball night in America, these these games at these times, I find those commercials very informative. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. I, I know the uh, the Griffey commercial with Jim Joyce is a hot topic right now. but uh, And the Otani one with New Balance. I feel like I see the same three commercials every uh, inning break or every timeout. But uh, I like my reminders of what time my games are. So those are my favorite commercials. Otani is like a – Mr. Baseball, you know, revolutionized the game. Well, since you brought him up, where where do you think he's gonna go? Um, if I am Shohei Otani, and if I am teams trying to sign Shohei Otani, I think he's gonna want to stay out west. I think he's going to the Dodgers. Uh, but I will say this: for whatever team does sign Shohei Otani. You have to understand you are signing more than Shohei Otani, the baseball player. As you just said, George, he transcended the game. I'm not sure if you worked any of the Mets Angels game in, games in August, but if you did, you could probably tell that that was those games, especially the one on Friday against Senga, those were more than just baseball games. Those were events. So every game he's going to play next year, even it is even if it's with the Angels, is going to be an event. So you're getting Shohei Otani, the baseball player, and not the pitcher because his elbow has to be repaired. But you're getting Shohei Otani, the hitter, and you're also getting Shohei Otani, who's going to attract people who would probably not normally come to a baseball game, but since he is such this uh, phenom that is out there now, something we have literally not seen since Babe Ruth, you're attracting all that. So where do I think he's going to go? I think he's going to the Dodgers. I yeah, think the Dodgers cool. will open up the checkbook and he will be a Dodger because, you know, Shohei, he wants to win. He's never made the playoffs. Mike Trout has only made the playoffs once. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he's staying in California. Can't say he's staying in Los Angeles because, remember, folks, the Angels are not in Los Angeles. They're in Anaheim. Uh, but I think he goes to the Dodgers to uh, pair up with Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman. In uh, Chavez Ravine. I like that take. Take right there. I'm gonna, wrap, I'm gonna wrap off the show with your celebrity crush. Who's your celebrity crush? Celebrity crush. Ooh, was not expecting this one on a sports. <laughs> hmm. Let's see, celebrity crush. I'll go with uh, my first one from day one, which was Selena Gomez. Nice, nice. That's a good one. All right, George, thank you for coming on the show. Is there anything you want to wrap off the show with? Uh, I did say I had a good David Wright and Jay Horowitz story for the end, so I will. Uh, this is a good way to end it. Do it. As, I did, as I did mention, I, I do share birthdays with David Wright. Uh, for our Mets fans out there, get ready. His birthday is in a little over in a month. It's December 20th, which is, of course, my birthday too. When I was interning last year, I was in the office at City Field on December 20th, and Jay knew it was my birthday. And obviously, he knew it was David Wright's birthday. So I'm talking to Jay. I'm like, hey, Jay, can we give David Wright a call? Any any shot we can do that? And he said, of course. So David answers in two seconds. And moral of the story, I got to wish David Wright a happy birthday over the phone. He wished me a happy birthday. Easily the coolest thing I've ever done. Uh not just in working at City Field, probably in my entire existence. That is the coolest thing I've ever done. Getting to wish David Wright a happy birthday when I share a birthday with him. Him wishing me a happy birthday was pretty cool, too. But uh, 
I uh, that is easily the coolest thing I've ever done. Whether we're talking about working at City Field or just life in general, getting to wish David Wright a happy birthday was really really cool. That's awesome. Man. That's a great story. And uh, yeah, he would be my favorite player after that too, hands down. You know. No, yeah, well, he always was my favorite player. He was the uh, first Mets jersey and only. I think one of only three Mets players jerseys or t-shirts I ever had. So uh, that was, it's always been a special connection I've had with him sharing the same birthday, 16 years older than he is. Awesome. Uh, where can people find you? Where can people find me? You can find yeah. me at city field. I have uh, red hair. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, George, a lot of people, after they take a tour, they come back and say, Oh my, you gave me a tour. <laughs> like I did, I have to do a double take because you know I can't remember everybody's face automatically. I remember one time last off season, I was I was out bowling with my friends, and we're walking out of the bowling alley, and this kid who I have no recollection of, he just walks up to me. He's wearing a Lindor jersey, and he comes running up to me, and no memory of this individual is coming into my brain. He's like, "Hey, hey, hey!" I'm like, "Yeah, you gave me a tour last year with my family." I said I did, and then it started to come back slowly when he was telling me what members of his family were there. So, um, yeah, you can find me at City Field. Uh, if you're looking for somebody new to follow on social media, I don't exactly post or tweet very often, but when I do, uh, it is usually about sports, specifically baseball, or now that baseball is over, might be a little more football talk. But uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, Jorge Pan Blanco 3. That is my name in Spanish, Jorge Pan Blanco 3. And then my Instagram handle is also Jorge Pan Blanco. Those are the two social medias I use the most. Uh, if you find the profile with the kid with the red hair, that's that's me. Uh, there Again, George is not as a common name as it used to be. So just look up Jorge Pan Blanco and you'll find me on Twitter and Instagram. And you can I post my links to my broadcast there if you guys want to watch. Uh, basketball season is coming up. In a few weeks, so that's a, that'll be a good watch, and uh, stay tuned if if you're interested. Stay tuned on there for good baseball tweets in terms of history or comedy. So keep an eye on that as well. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for coming on, George, and I'll see you in a splash. George, thank you, my friend.